Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a GameReplays.org Heroes of New Earth cast. Tonight, I am the Four Court Jester, and with me is Luke DeRiff, and we're going to be taking care of the Druids vs. Wall Gosu Gamers Steel Series World Cup. $40,000 on the line, and this is game number two. We did game number one on... I believe Saturday, today is now Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, so, oh, well, actually I think it's Wednesday for Luke. How, uh, is it Wednesday for you right now, Luke? Yeah, it's Wednesday. Mmm, fun times. Alright, so this is game number two, and basically, uh, just wanted to go over a quick thing on here on the spectator chat here. Basically, what I got into the game live, but I didn't actually, you know, ask for Gosu Gamers permission, so I I backed out and said I'm not going to go to game number two or three, I'll do it through rate plays, and I just want to say, you know, we, we want to work with Gosu Gamers, you know, because these guys have, like, the biggest hunt tournament in the world right now, isn't that right, Luke? Yeah, they probably have $40,000, a lot of money. Um, there are some pretty big tournaments coming up now, but, you know, the, the Home World Cup is, up to this date, the biggest hunt tournament. True enough. Now, so I just want to get that out of the way. We have no animosity towards Ghost of Gamers. Really like these guys. The Theodore, Jack Hack, um, the Headhunter just joined them. Do you remember the de the, the Headhunter back in the day? Um, Did you ever no. listen to any of his casts back back when? No. Okay. Well, he's a pretty decent uh, cast. They got War Machine out there as well, and Runes and Lulu. So they're they're a fun crew of casters. So that being said, this is the Gosu Gamers tournament. It is I don't know what round this is, but we don't we can't seem to find any replay submitted anywhere. But uh this is game number two. So what are we gonna say there, Luke? Yeah, this is like they're not on our side, they're not on Ghost of Gamers side, they're nowhere, so yeah, we just went looking for them. I suppose it's gotta be like at least quarter finals. I'm not sure though. Mm, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, it, it's round... but it doesn't matter. Games is games. I think it's and round three. I think there's eight rounds. So you know, round three of eight would be the fifth out, which wouldn't even be quarterfinals. But who knows? Uh, but yeah, here we are. Game number two. So game number one, for a quick little recap, Druids and Wall in there. Uh, they went up head-to-head, -head and Druids ultimately won. It was a pretty decently long game. But a lot of good plays from both sides went back and forth a good a good amount. But Druids ended up being victorious. They took the first game 1-0, and this was played immediately after. So that being said, uh, we do have some bands, and we should probably get through them pretty quick here because the picks have now started. So, Mr. Luke, would you like to go over the bands with us? Yes, fortunately, they're not that odd. We have Tundra, we have Pebbles, Pharaoh, Dr. Repulsor, Sand Rafe, and Flint Beast World. All very reasonable bands. Pebbles, of course, banned most likely by Wall Wally Wallin. I got troubles with that name anyways. Wallin. Um Yeah, it's Wallin. Yeah. Wallin. But Revy, we all know, plays a lot, a lot, a lot of Pebbles. So um, they probably wanted to ban that out of the way. Pharaoh becomes more and more of a standard ban as many teams just hate going up against him. Um, then we have Tundra, who's just by many considered to be the strongest hero in the game right now with um, a proper player on him and, you know, a player that can micro the bird pretty well. He is just absolutely insanely strong. Then we have uh, Sanrafe, who might be a bit odd, but um, he is kind of the hard carry fan thing, flavor of the month, whatever you want to call it right now. So he's a pretty reasonable ban. Um, Dr. Repulsor, pretty much <laughs> standard at band. this point. Yeah. <laughs> And um, Flint Beastwood, just a great, you know, damage dealer. Probably the best and hardest range carry in the pool right now. Well, the best is subjective to whoever's playing it. You know, who you're playing yes. against, how good your farm's been, etc., etc. But some very strong heroes definitely out of the way here. Dr. Repulsor Streak has uh, lives on. I think I'm up to 18, 19 days without seeing him ever. So I don't even think everyone remembers oh. to know how to play him, but... <laughs> just how I see it. Yeah, suppose we don't see any plays of both of the Mad Brothers, none of Dr. Repulsor because he is banned, and none of Bombardier because nobody likes to pick him apart from Chu. I think he was actually auto banned, but I could be wrong. Uh, I could be yeah. wrong. As I said, I'm not too familiar right now with the rules uh, with the Ghost 2 Gamers, but that being said, we're almost done the picks here, so let's just take a quick look. We'll start off with Devourer, a uh, nice, gr great, chunky hero there uh, with his hook and obviously his strength gain and magic 
resistance. Slither and Defider is going to be complementing him. Slither, I don't know, Slither could be going for that support role. Depends on who else gets really picked up here. Might be going for that semi-carry role. I think I do, did see a very offensive Slither the other day. Yeah, we, um, Trixie has picked his offensive sliver up again with the early helmet of a Black Legion. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call her a, a carry right now because, semi, you know, semi. you don't... Ne yeah, semi-carry um, because he's... Oh, sorry. I just I just looked at the picks. I was pretty astonished. Um, Wild Soul but, just immediately yeah. ready right there. He's good to go. Yeah, um, I just got to focus. No, um... um what was I talking about? Talking about Slither. Yeah, Slither. I wouldn't necessarily call him, call him carry. Um, he's still more of a supportive hero. Um, with just you know the role of support, it can be so far stretched in Heroes of Nerf that you know just saying he's a support and then he changes his item build slightly, his play size slightly, does not make him automatically a carry. It's he still still stays as a support kind of hero, in my opinion. Okay. And his greatest strength are his wards, well, still. I mean, t just taking a quick look at the wall in as we wait for Louis here to pick. Yeah. Devourer, Tempest, Defiler, Wild Soul, Slither. Really? They got two junglers. Yeah, I mean, t but Tempest and Wild Soul, that's two jungle heroes, or two typically jungled heroes. Devourer and Defiler, both great options for taking that mid, and that kind of leaves Slither out in the dust, like, as kind of the lone support here. So I think he's yeah, really going to be forced into that support role. Mm, yeah, he he's going to be forced into a support role definitely together yeah. with Tempest. Um, but the, mo the most warning is probably going to come from Sliver because Tempest obviously needs to blink dagger. However, I really don't see how they're working their lanes. Um, Tempest can be laned. You know, it's quite a favorable thing to do to run her in a, in a long lane. You know, she's pretty strong early game. She can deny creep. Um, experience as well is pretty dangerous with of course the elementals and her stun but i don't know how they gotta work their lanes out. i just have no clue well, unless they run some really odd odd try lane strategy hey, it's all about it's innovation like in this game, right? soil and slither but that would be very strange indeed. So I'm not sure what they're going to do. All right, so Druids, they're going for a very, you know, typical lineup. Uh, apart from that Hammerstorm, you know, a lot of well-known heroes here. The Obviously, the very destructive Thunderbringer being played there by Louie as he picks him up. And then, of course, you know, we got Bubbles and Valkyrie, both very great solo lane heroes. <laughs> so I don't know, two really hard solo lane heroes to match up against two really big jungling heroes. We'll have to see what each team is thinking. That kind of leaves us with the Wretched Hag, which arguably is probably going to go mid. Mm, what they also could do, run is a 2-2 lineup, because I think I saw that from Druids in, other, in another game, that you could run Valkyrie, Hammerstorm, dual stun lane, you know, the hammer really easy, really easy setup for the Valkyrie mm -hmm. arrow, and then run like something really odd, like a, a Bubbles, Thunder bring a lane mid, but you know, two heroes are really dependent on levels, but it seems that's not going to happen because Thunderbringer is already heading mid and Hag is going to head mid. So these lanes are pretty screwed up on both sides. Well, yeah, Thunderbringer top. And of course, Ma I didn't really think Meg or Hag wouldn't go mid at that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it l does look like, you know, three really big stun heavy heroes down at the bottom. Or sorry, Bubbles doesn't have a stun. He just has a lot of mobility. Yeah. But uh, just taking a quick look here at Walls, I was watching them move away. Tempest, Slither, Wild Soul all up top, and that's, that's both junglers in a single lane with a Slither. Now down south, of course, you see the, the druids there, and they're about to find this Defiler. Defiler has wards. Bottom, Defiler has warded bottom, and typically you don't really see... The, you know, the Legion warding bottom. I don't think anything is actually going to happen here for a kill. I mean, a lot of harassment. But yeah. Hammerstorm just Pretty can't, can't yeah. catch up to that. But this is very weird. I mean, like, we got the offensive ward down here by Druids. Fine, no problem. Usually, though, you'll take your wards up top where this tri lane is, put down a ward right behind this first tier tower, and then you'll just wait for someone to show up and just get an instant first blood. But that's not what they've elected to do. Slither's so putting. Oh, they come for creep skipping. Oh, this is so odd. What are Wally doing? This is so cool because um, let's just try to think what what their intention is. Probably doing a really early tower push, of course. Ah, oh, with Wild Soul and Tempest. Um, <laughs> Tempest, two really strong pushers. 
And then, you know, of course, how didn't we see that, Jester? Hmm, how? The Filer, you got the Filer, super strong pusher, right? And then we have Slither, super strong pusher as well. So they're gonna try to get really, really, uh, a really, really early tower kill by you know skipping all, skip, skipping all the creep waves, and you know just trying to get this tower down as fast as possible to establish. I don't know what they want to establish, but you know tower kill early on is always good. Then they're probably gonna send one in the solo, one of their heroes in 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 the jungle, or even both in the jungle, and that slither go one versus one. I just don't know what. What they're trying to do. Well, at this point, I mean, the only thing that you're going to get an advantage out, of course, of destroying a tower, it's only a minute and a half yeah, into this game. But that tower is definitely going to be going down. Look at its hit point pool. It has not had a single creep reach it from this Hellborn side. So it's definitely going down, no question about that. But the only thing you're going to get out of it, of course, is that extra lane protection is now gone from the Hellborn, and you're going to get all that massive amount of gold. And at a minute and a half, that's a good amount of gold. Like, how much did each player just get here? I mean, right now, let's see gold. 400, 500, 500, 600. Take a quick look at Druids. 100, 300, 300. So, like, that's a pretty good gold lead, right? They're 1388 gold lead at this point. Yeah, definitely. It's a, but not 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 only, you know, you lose that defensive structure, and ultimately you lose a big chunk of map control yeah. as well because you know you, you can't port to that tower you can't counter gank to that tower um and it's just so hard especially with the slither in the lane they're gonna have a really hard time going up against that lane and they just can't retreat back is i mean it's really clever what they've done but the only problem is that is the same with with like the level one conger strategies you you can pull off the level one conger but the question is how are you going to advance after the level mm -hmm. one conger, what are they going to do now? If they if they can t carry that lead over, then that is just super super good and that's super strong. But if they you know they just take a first tower and then they're like, yeah, we're taking the first tower. What we're we going to do now? Um, that is not going to be very good. Looks like Temp is going to head mid and um, pick up a bring up a teacher. Pretty standard pickups. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really curious how they're gonna work. Well, it I'm now. just looking at Bergilon here. Oh, nearly uh, takes the bait for uh, Wild Soul there with the teleport. Just did not teleport to the right spot. Got hit by a little bit of a harassment arrow. But both jungle pushers and I do believe Slither is here. Yeah, we got four now pushing this mid with a level 4 Devourer to be backing them up. I mean, of course, they are against a level 4 Wretched Hag, and we do have support here. The le like, there's nobody top lane anymore. That's just uh, uh, an empty lane. Nobody seems to care about it right now. Bottom lane, however, has been a lot more traditional, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. They've been fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looks like they want to put a lot of pressure now up here on this, uh, you know, mid-tower. So it does look like a very early pushed strat. And as you are saying, I mean, okay, fine. You get all these towers down. You go kill Kong or whatever. What are you going to do? So you have to have some kind of really offensive and brilliant mid-plan, uh, mid-game plan to, to yeah, carry on the and, game. And they're... Yeah, sorry. Um, their mid game plan is like they probably what I thought they would try to do is just take the mid tower as well, which they failed to do ultimately right now. So that is, you know, not going according to their plan. Um, Barcel's heading top because he needs farm. Obviously, he's they're gonna rely pretty big on him when it comes to late game in terms of carrying. But the father actually had a has had a very good time bottom. You know, um, in terms of creep kills, she's got she's up to. 17 and 7, not quite the highest creep score in the game um, because Rest Attack has more. But, you know, looking at a very solid 270 gold per minute farm. And the Fowler is definitely one of those heroes that can roll mid game and, of course, can force so many tower pushes. And with that one tower down up, um, up here, top it's going to be really tough for the for the hell one to well speaking of that. top it looks like all three heroes from this original lane has come back and said valkyrie get out of here and that's a bloodlust kill right there i mean the, the ward the poison the stun and of course wild souls auto attack i don't even think he needs to bear there but that will be the first kill five minutes in but i mean look at the damage that these towers have wrought it is pretty impressive so wall taking a big lead here uh early on with especially the gold not really so much the experience Definitely the goal. Now, you were saying Defiler winning the lane down south. Great. 17-7. Yeah, that's especially good compared to Bubbles, who, you know, just a few seconds ago was sitting at about a 7-3 score. He's upped it to 13-3. Oh, crap. It looks like Devour is on the offensive as well. Takes down that Hag. Uh, no problem. And now he's level 6.